Welcome back. My name is Chris, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Power BI and really business intelligence tools overall in relation to NetSuite. So if you're not already familiar with Power BI, it is a tool or really a bundle of tools that allow for reporting and specifically data visualization. So not just having basic reports available to you, but providing them in charts and graphs and various ways that make them more accessible and more useful. So the first question is why Power BI or really any BI tool in the first place? Why not just utilize NetSuite's native reporting tools? You have reports, save searches, and suite analytics. Well, anyone who's ever dealt with reports and save searches in NetSuite is fully aware of the fact that they really don't have any data visualization or severely limited. So those are not options. If you're trying to have this sort of very visceral reporting tools that you can take advantage of. And then Suite Analytics actually does have some useful capabilities. There's two main problems with it. One, just most people don't know how to use Suite Analytics. They're not even aware that it's there. A lot of consultants don't know how to access or set it up. And it's not the easiest tool to get the hang of in the first place. So if you can't utilize it, then it's simply not helpful in the first place. And then secondly, it's definitely more limited in terms of its capability and its robust kind of data configuration standpoint than something like Power BI or any of its competitors. So it is an option, but it's definitely a baby option or much more limited compared to a tool like Power BI. So that's kind of the context of why if you've got complex reporting requirements and you want to take advantage of some of these things, you might want to look at some of these BI tools to see how they can be integrated in with NetSuite. So in this particular video, I'm actually going to walk you through two examples of one is going to be Power BI and then an additional tool that give you a concept of what these tools and what these dashboards can look like in your NetSuite. So let's take a look at the first one. What we've got here is a example of a dashboard, kind of a demo dashboard that's been made using Power BI. And keep in mind that this is not what you're seeing right here is a dashboard that's been fully configured and customized using Power BI. This is not Power BI. It's not like you can just go to Microsoft and say, I want to buy this BI tool. This is custom made. So this tool and what we're seeing here right now, it's presented in just a blank browser, but generally you'd see it actually baked into your NetSuite dashboard. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. Um, so this would be placed underneath your actual center, that navigation bar at the top. This is a perfect example of some of the capabilities that you can have with some of these custom dashboards. So for example, here we have an income statement provided. We've got some KPIs up here in the top left. We've got graphical charts with line plots. We've got an additional chart down here on the bottom right with net profit margin. We've got the actual full on income statement here with accordion uh, capability to look specifically into the various aspects of the income statement. And then in the top right, we've got all these different ways to slice and dice this report. Again, customized to this particular dashboard, you could add whatever additional kind of filters that you wanted. So we could filter this by department, we could do it by subsidiary, by specific dates, etc. It's also a dynamic dashboard. So for example, we're looking at the income statement over various months here. But let's say we just want to look at March. I can click on that and it modifies all these other, you could consider like portlets, uh, the KPIs, the income statement, really to just hone in on, now we're just looking at March. And I could unselect that. I could do multiple. Let's say I just want to look at March and April. So you've got a few different options there. And notice they all update as soon as you influence one of them. And you can do it vice versa. Let's say you're on the income statement and you only want to look at February. Now all the other charts modify to match that. Same with the chart down here. If I clicked on that, it would give me the exact same kind of focus. So that's an example just with the income statement. Let's take a look now at, uh, we can see we have one of eight pages here. So the next one up is the balance sheet. Same exact concept. We've got KPIs, we've got date filters. We can look at particular accounts. Maybe we only want to look at current liabilities. So it now gives us uh, a chart that properly reflects that. Or maybe we don't want to look at any particular. We want to see all of them together. It can show us that. We could click on any one particular point. It would then focus in on that date range and it would modify all of these other portlets to reflect what's being clicked in that one location. Moving on, we have a cash flow, same exact concept. 
we've got AR aging, AP aging, we've got a revenue. Now this has a pretty cool chart up here. We can kind of zone in on a specific time. We can also click on one specific coloring here. In this case, these are each a different customer. So I'm clicking on a specific customer in a specific time range. And again, it gives us, for example, this particular customer, the total revenue, the cogs, the margin, et cetera, for that customer for that time period. So a lot of different options there. Some of the other options are expenses. And lastly, inventory. Maybe we wanna hone in on a specific type of item, or we can come over here and we can select amongst different classes of items. So a lot of different possibilities here. And again, this is a custom made dashboard for the sake of this demo. They just provided these eight different options. But if you had one specific one that you needed, or you wanted different KPIs shown in a different order, configured separately, all of these different things can be configured. This particular dashboard was created by a company called SES Cloud. They're a NetSuite solution provider. You can see their logo up in the top left here. So they were gracious enough to provide me with this, but a lot of different solution providers and alliance partners do implementations of BI tools that will integrate in with NetSuite. Certainly all the big firms will offer these implementations companies like RSM, et cetera. But even the smaller companies, things like Zone & Co, Sellers Universe, they also do these types of implementations. And there's they'll all kind of implement them and customize them based on your requirements. Some do a better job, some worse. I find this was a particularly impressive dashboard that I, I found quite helpful. But you have a lot of different options, different price ranges. You should just be aware of that. Another thing to keep in mind is this particular dashboard was created using Power BI, but there are these other BI tools. There's actually a lot of other BI options that you can take advantage of. There's things like Looker Studio, Tableau, Click, many different options that can be utilized. And I do wanna show you another example of uh, one that's both done by another company and also utilizing a different business intelligence tool. So let's open that up now. And this particular case, it even says on the left here, this is done by a company called Guru Solutions. They're based out of Montreal, and they're using Looker Studio to provide this dashboard. And here you can actually get a proper representation of a dashboard that's baked into NetSuite. So you can see we could go to our home dashboard if we wanted to, and over here we have a tab specifically for the Guru's BI. You could click on this, and you would have access to your own custom dashboard. Just like any dashboard, you can move these things around. And I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on this particular one because I think you get the concept from the previous example, but you've got all different types of options. This is a donut chart. We've got, in this case, project financials. Similarly, they have filters. You can click on any one particular project. It updates the graph and the KPIs to match that. So a lot of different options that are available there. And just talking about a little bit more generally to kind of understand how this works, so what's happening here is these are dashboards. They're utilizing a business intelligence tool. A company comes along, they do an implementation and an integration utilizing your data repository and hooking it into the BI tool to provide these types of custom dashboards. Some are highly customized, some are kind of pre-made and you can buy them and say, yeah, I want something that looks just like that. And they'll just simply do the hookups and make sure that the information's coming through and filling in on your dashboard appropriately. So you got a lot of different options there. And one thing to be aware of is not only is the BI tool important, but also the connector between the data repository and your actual dashboard is also very important. And again, there's a lot of different options there. In the dashboard I showed you earlier, made by SCS Cloud, they generally utilize a connector called SuperSync that's owned by NetGain. And they also have their own proprietary connector called SOMAS that they can take advantage of if the data set is larger in certain instances. This particular one by Guru Solutions, they actually utilize their own proprietary data scraper that uh, brings in, it can also act as a data warehouse, and it connects in with Looker Studio. So that is another, again, it's a very important aspect of this. It's not just the BI tool, but also how is it being integrated? Another common one that most people have heard of is Celigo and a dozen additional ones. So you have a lot of different options there. So now that you get a concept of what these tools can do, what are some of the downsides of going with one of these business intelligence integrations? Well, first off, obviously, if you're just using native NetSuite, which you're already paying for, then of course, utilizing something like Suite Analytics doesn't cost you anything additional. You're already using what you've paid for. 
So going with any kind of additional BI integration is going to cost you some additional amount of money. Now the range can vary, of course, depending on your requirements, also the company that you go with and the tool that you're using. But I wouldn't say that I've ever seen it really lower than $5,000 in terms of any kind of BI tool integration. And you can easily go up to twenty dollars or $30,000 for something that's a little bit more customized and set up, especially if you have some more users. And of course, if you've got tons of users and you need very extensive and highly customized reports, you can very easily surpass the $30,000 mark, just depending on how many reports you want to dig into. So there is that aspect to think with. And you should also be aware that the price really breaks down into three things that you're paying for. One is the tool itself. So uh, in the previous example, that was the Looker Studio. I believe that one is free, but Power BI is definitely not free. They charge you per user per month. And then you have the integration or the connecting tool. I've mentioned SuperSync, there's Soligo, there's Somas, uh, Gruz has its own personal one. So those have their own cost, of course. Some of them you will have to pay for it separately. Uh, in many instances, it's bundled in as just one price. So you pay, let's say, $20,000. You're buying a specific kind of pre-agreed package of reporting dashboards, and it's going to use a specific integration. And that will include the first two things I mentioned, as well as the third, which is the actual implementation itself. In some cases, you can make an attempt at doing an implementation if you have a very skilled programmer or administrator, but in general, you're gonna to wanna to go with professionals who do this on a routine basis. So again, that implementation cost, in some cases, it's split out as its own cost, but usually these things are combined together and you're simply paying one price, which is gonna encapsulate all three things together. And if you wanna get more customizations or reports, added on or later down the road or in addition to that, then most of these companies handle it with kind of time and materials after the main implementation is done. You're simply paying by the hour. So that's just something to think with. If you're willing to pay that extra cost, you do have the ability to get these much more sophisticated reporting tools and dashboards. The second thing to be aware of is the integration, those connectors I've been referring to, those things can be finicky. So they can sometimes simply not connect, they can break their connection, sometimes they're not actually filling in the most recent information, sometimes there's particular users that can't connect, they can run into all types of different issues and problems. So just be aware of that and know that it's not just like you create it and you're never gonna have to deal with it again. Usually there's some kind of maintenance or minimum when problems do arise, you have support that you can rely on to debug issues, etc. It's just something to be aware of. Certain integrations and these connecting tools tend to be less problematic. Some are a little bit more problematic, but they all tend to have some problems at some times. So be aware of that. And then lastly, I want to talk about the implementation timeline. If you've got a relatively simple setup and maybe you want something that's very out of the box, you don't have a lot of customizations needed, an implementation can be done as quickly as one week. Generally, they will take a few weeks, maybe even months if you've got more sophisticated requirements, but it doesn't have to be a very extensive implementation process. In a lot of instances, these companies will have some sort of pre-made package that you can kind of go with that look and simply say, well, instead of a balance sheet, I want to be taking a look just at cash flow and expenses. I want to customize like this and this. So the requirements for the implementation can be cut down using pre-made assets. And that's your basic overview of business intelligence tools. Hopefully I gave you a concept of what these things look like, some of their capabilities, and just a general overview of what are your different options to go with them and some facts related to each. If you found this particular video helpful, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. If you're interested in anything I showed you in this particular video, I will include links for SES Cloud and Guru Solutions down below. So if you're interested in taking advantage of one of these particular dashboards, you can definitely reach out to them and they will get you set up. So with that, I'll see you in the next video.